Welcome to another lesson and we're going to be learning about vectors addition. How can you add vectors in two dimensions? Now adding vectors in one dimension is a subject for another lesson, another video, but if you are familiar with adding vectors in one dimension, this is the next step that you should be comfortable with, which is adding vectors in two dimensions. Let's say I have a vector acting at a certain angle, vector A and vector B acting at a different angle, and I need to find the resultant of these two vectors, the combination of both. What is the resultant of combining vector A and vector B? What is the resultant vector is going to be a representative of both. So let's get right to the lesson. Now we'll be learning about vector addition. in two dimensions using components. Now this will be applicable to mathematics, physics, any vector acting at a specific angle you want to add it to at another vector acting at a different angle. Let's get to the um, core of the uh, lesson straight ahead. If I do have my x-axis and I do have my y-axis, this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis, and I'm going to consider movement counterclockwise to be positive for my angles. Let's say I do have a vector a. which is acting at 30 degrees and then another vector vector b which is acting at 60 degrees now in order to find the resultant we need to do the following we're going to follow a sequence of steps Step number one, resolve the vectors into X and Y components. This is step number one. So what do we mean by that? Let's say I'm going to be taking vector A. And I'm going to break it down to its components in the X direction. I'm going to call it AX. And I'm going to break it down to its Y component in the Y direction. And I'm going to call it AY. <clears throat> now, let me give you a small trick. If I want to get my X component, I'm going to say AX equals to my vector A. Take a look at the angle. The angle is trapped between your actual vector and your X axis, 30 degrees. So it's going to be a cosine in this case, cosine 30. Now we can call them theta one and theta two. Let's do that just to make things a bit smoother and straightforward. I'm going to replace my 30 degrees and my 60 degrees by different angles. Let's call the blue one theta two and the red one theta one and place them in the equation as follows. So A cosine theta 1, it means we are going to find the projected component of A onto the x-axis. And many students, they get confused with the fact, shall I be using cosine theta or sine theta? Let me give you a straightforward uh, trick that you can apply. Take a look at the angle. Is it trapped between your x-axis and your vector? Yes, then the x component will be a cosine of that angle. If it's the other way around, if your theta is placed, let's say, here, then your y component will be the cosine of the angle. 
keep that in mind. Now let's get to the um, y component. A y equals to my a sine theta one. So I have resolved my vector a to its components. And I'm going to do the same thing now with my vector b, where I will say bx equals to b cosine theta 2. Why did I say cosine? Because theta 2 is trapped between vector b and the x-axis. And by would be b sine of theta 2. Now I have resolved both of these components for the two vectors, vectors a and vector b. Now what I'm going to be doing right now, step number two, add the components in the x and y directions. So I'm going to be collecting my components in the x direction and components in the y direction such that my resultant, I'm going to call it Rx, equals to Ax plus Bx. This is the x, this is the bx. We're going to add all of the x components together. And I'm going to add all of the y components together. Ry equals to ay plus by. This is my ay and this is my by. So what I've done is I've resolved the components a and b into x and y components. Now I'm going to be adding the X components together and I'm going to be adding the Y components together. Now the third step would be find the resultant vector. And this will be done through the following where I'll be applying Pythagoras theorem where I will say my resultant vector equals to the square root of rx, the whole thing squared, plus ry, the whole thing squared. Why? Why did I do that? If I combine my x component, let's say this is my rx, and this is my ry, my resultant will be somewhere right here. This is r. So I've combined AX and BX, and I combined AY and BY to help me find the X components and the Y components of my resultant vector. Now I'm going to find the resultant through the mathematical formula or the mathematical application where I will say, okay, this is your X, this is your Y. Here we have a 90 degree angle and we're going to apply Pythagoras theorem which says this side squared equals this side squared plus this side squared. Now once we are done with that, once we have done that part, we should be able to find the angle at which this resultant vector is acting. Let's call it theta r. And how do we do that? So we have found the resultant of the vectors now we need to find the angle and i will say tan theta r equals to from the mathematics and opposite of over adjacent and this would equal to my ry over rx this side divided by this side then I need to unlock my theta, theta r equals to tan inverse ry over rx. So here we go. We are able to find the resultant of the vector that we have. Let's recap the steps. Step number one, 
we broke down the components of vector A into X and Y, vector B into X and Y. We have added the components in the X direction and in the Y direction separately, such that Rx equals to Ax plus Bx, Ry equals to Ay plus By. Then I'm going to be finding the resultant of these vectors, basically vector A and vector B, going to be finding their resultants, the combination of the, these two vectors, and once I've found the resolved components, the total in the x direction and in the y direction, I have rx, I have ry, I'm going to say, okay, my resultant equals to the total in the x direction squared plus the total in the y direction squared, and I will take the square root of the whole thing. Then I need to find the angle at which it's operating. And I'm going to say the your resultant in the y direction, the components in the resultant in the y direction over the x components resulting in the x direction, that will be ry over rx. And I will say, okay, tan theta r equals to that resultant in the y component over the resultant in the x component, divide them. Then I will take the tan inverse to be able to find the angle. These are the exact steps that you should follow to add any vectors in two dimensions. Step number one, resolve the vectors into X and Y components, as I've showed you. Number two, add the components in X and Y directions together, such that you have a total Rx and a total Ry. Then find the resultant vector using the Pythagoras theorem right here. Then you're going to be finding the angle at which this resultant is acting, such that by the end you're going to be having a single resultant vector r operating at an angle theta r, which is basically the combination of these two vectors, vector a and vector b. Now make sure that you replay these steps over and over again just to make sure that you are quite familiar with them. Now in the upcoming video we're going to put this to the practice where we're going to actually have a couple vectors acting at a couple angles and we're going to resolve them and find the resultant of these two vectors using the vector addition in two dimensions. I truly hope that you found this lesson beneficial. Make sure that you join our community by smashing that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next class.